sadly, this year, the SOFI is showing that the numbers have not changed from the previous years, basically, which were already years where we have seen already the increase because of COVID-19. So what we are reporting this year is that we have between 713 million and 757 million people which are chronic undernourished, people facing hunger. This is one out of 11 people in the world are facing hunger. But the other issue which is really important of this office is the disparities. For example, the region which is doing the worst is the African region, where we have one in five people facing hunger uh, this year. South America has very uh, developed social protection programs that allows them to target interventions so they can effectively move uh, out of, of, of hunger in a very fast way because it's, it's efficient. In the case of Africa, we have not observed that. We have observed that they still don't have the institutionality to deliver a good targeted social protection program. But on the other hand, is the region that has been affected the most by conflicts and by climate, uh, and of course by slowdowns and downturns. It's a region that today is showing the bigger number of countries in food crises because of these three key drivers, and conflict being the first uh, in this sense. When we look at food insecurity, we not only look at hunger, which is chronic undernourishment, but we also look at overweight and obesity. The importance of affordability of healthy diets is that it's a diet that is diverse and brings all the macro and micronutrients that we need so that we can avoid problems of chronic undernourishment, but we can also avoid problems of overweight and obesity. Today, we have 2.8 billion people that don't have access to this minimum cost healthy diet. The number is extremely high, is not improved relative to the previous years, uh, and that tells us that we need to do a lot here. We need to change uh, this paradigm of why countries have prices which are so high that don't allow people to consume, and also why income is a problem, because it's not only an issue of the supply side, but it's also an issue of the income side. We are off track, that's clear. We are off track in all the indicators. So what we know is that if we project the numbers of today, we will be uh, up to 582 million people chronically undernourished or in hunger by 2030. This is more than what was the target, which is zero hunger. So we need to accelerate the process and we need to change if we want to get as close as possible of our target, which was a very ambitious target from the beginning. We only have six years left. we need to change how we finance uh, hunger in the world. And that's where we need to find ways in which we can accelerate the financing. But we need several things to happen. First, we need to coordinate better. Donors and different agencies provide funding with different objectives in mind. And that needs to be improved. We need to increase coordination as well as we need to increase targeting. Second, we need to be more risk takers. We are too risk adverse in the way we allocate the resources. Sometimes it's necessary to take some risk. For example, to sacrifice a little bit of growth to be able to assure that you have better lower poverty and therefore less hunger in the world. And third, we need to increase the different uh, ways in which we get financing. The new initiative uh, that Brazil is launching, the, the Alliance uh, Against Poverty and Hunger, is central in this respect. And that's why we have made the decision uh, this year to launch the SOFI in the U20 of Brazil because we believe that this is a starting point for this revolution that we need to accelerate the transformation of the agri-food system. <music> <music>